they could be anywhere, lurking in dark corners, hidden in plain sight. There are the common hazards and dangers to our hedgehog visitors, and in this video, we're going to investigate how we can minimize and remove those hazards from our gardens. Welcome to Hedgehog's Hollow, the land here at the bottom of my garden. My name is Mike and Hedgehog's Hollow is the channel for people who are interested and passionate about hedgehogs, who want to attract them into their gardens and then support them once they're there. And if that sounds like you, then why don't you consider subscribing or reaching out to us and contacting us on any of the social media platforms or our website. And don't forget to also look out for our monthly newsletter and sign up for that too. Now, most of our hedgehogs are probably still hibernating, or you may have those who, like Walter, are actually already active, perhaps never even went to hibernation in the first place. Whatever the status of your hedgehogs, now is as good a time as any to check your garden for any hazards and dangers that might be there for visiting hedgehogs. And even if you checked in the autumn, the winds and the rains of winter may have changed things in the garden and presented new hazards for your visiting hedgehogs. So it's a good time now to check before spring and before you start seeing more and more hedgehog visitors and traffic through your garden. But before we start looking for hazards, I want to take you back to some footage that I captured here in the garden from last autumn and some really interesting behavior from one of our visiting hedgehogs. So here you can see the hedgehog with the stripe down its back heads towards the normal exit, which is the gap beneath the side gate. And here on a separate occasion is the same hedgehog, but the camera is not even pointing at the exit that the hedgehog chooses. It goes to the other side of the gate. On a different occasion, now you can see what it's doing. It's actually using a far smaller gap to the left hand side. And as I say, this wasn't the only occasion. This behavior happened very often. And if we look closely, you can see exactly how much effort it takes for the hedgehog to get through a gap that is no larger than about seven or eight centimeters in height. You can see the effort of squeezing through that gap and out. So just to be clear, I'm not advocating or suggesting that hedgehog holes should be any smaller than the standard 15 by 15 centimeters that we've been talking about. Our friend, the CD case is the average size that is generally referenced as a friendly size for hedgehog holes. And that counts for wherever we are consciously making holes and entrances or tunnels for hedgehogs, be that in hedgehog houses, in feeding stations, or in fact, in the hedgehog highways, the entrances through our fences. But rather, I want to just switch the thinking around a little bit and don't get caught up in thinking that hedgehogs can only access holes that are of this size. Rather, think like a hedgehog and think on behalf of a hedgehog. Hedgehogs are curious little critters and will really try and get into spaces that clearly are not necessarily suited or meant for hedgehogs. So those are the type of hazards we should be looking out for. The danger with any kind of itemized list is that it can be seen as being exhaustive. And no matter how many items I include, there may always be something that's lurking in your garden that is not included on that list. So let's explore two concepts. And the two concepts I want to look at is thinking like a hedgehog and thinking for the hedgehog. So what do I mean? Think like a hedgehog. What are the things that hedgehogs might be attracted to that might be good places for them to hide, to find security, to find warmth, to build a home. Those are likely to be the things where we're more likely to see hedgehogs and being attracted to may represent the biggest risks to them. And that's where thinking for the hedgehog comes in. Hedgehogs are curious little critters. And so having thought about where they might actually reside in your garden, Think on their behalf to identify any possible risks that that area might represent to them. Let's have a look at an example. What if we look at sheds and decking? These are fantastic places that offer secure hiding spaces 
four hedgehogs and very often hedgehogs will get in under them and remember the gap of seven to eight centimeters is the gap that that hedgehog was climbing through so there's a possibility that even if you don't think there's space a hedgehog may be living under your shed or under your decking so how should we think on behalf of the hedgehog well when we are in the shed are we using anything that may seep through the floor in the same way when we're cleaning the deck are we sure that there's no hedgehog living under that deck and perhaps you're using some kind of cleaning agent that may leak through under the deck and may not be good for hedgehogs also when we start moving sheds or lifting sheds are we sure that we've checked under the shed to ensure that there's no resident hedgehog hiding there and we're endangering it when we're starting to work on that shed or on the decking here's another very common example thinking like a hedgehog they will be attracted to ponds and areas of water we've discussed before how important water is to a hedgehog to keep it hydrated so they will be attracted to ponds or areas of water perhaps sometimes deep water so thinking for the hedgehog have you provided a way for that hedgehog to get out of the pond if they fall in they are remarkable swimmers but perhaps they can't get out very easily if the pond has very steep sides and you've not provided either a ramp or a beach where they can get out. Perhaps a less common example might be open drains or deep ditches. Now, during the winter, perhaps manhole covers have come off small drains or pipes, and it's common that hedgehogs can fall into such items, and once in, simply cannot get out. And it's the same with ditches. Do you have any steep-sided ditches in the garden that a hedgehog may be chasing a beetle into and become stuck and trapped within that ditch? and they cannot get out. So look around the garden for those areas that may represent risks and give the hedgehogs ways to escape those risks should they fall into a deep ditch. And certainly for the case of open drains, ensure that all drains, all pipe work are covered and hedgehogs cannot simply slip into them or find themselves trapped in a drain or a pipe that perhaps they can't turn around in and then become trapped. One last example, make sure that you have checked all wire fences and potential netting hazards for hedgehogs. We know that hedgehogs will roam and roam extensively, which means they will move from one garden to another. And all they're looking for is that opening. And we've also seen that our friendly striped hedgehog went through a gap as small as seven or eight centimeters high. So make sure that in the case of wire fences that may have holes in them, that those holes are large enough for hedgehogs to easily get through. Make sure that any netting you may have up in the garden for keeping birds and butterflies away from your veg have not fallen to the ground and represent a tangling hazard for hedgehogs that they can't get out of. Perhaps the soccer net, the football net from Christmas is still out and that represents a trap hazard to the hedgehog. So be sure that any items are lifted off the ground by at least the 15 centimeters we've been talking about in the case of the CD case or have been lifted clear of the ground. There's enough space in the case of wire fences for the hedgehog to get through. Now, don't forget to also take this thinking with you when you leave your garden and you might be walking in the local park or in the countryside Think for a hedgehog and think on behalf of a hedgehog and look out for those hazards that might exist out in the countryside and in the area around your own garden. In particular, things like garbage and litter that may have accumulated and been pushed along on the wind and now be residing in hedges where hedgehogs are more likely to be. It's things like these plastic types of ties that you find around cans and things like that. And more tragically, recently, more things like discarded or disposed face masks, which are being discarded in the countryside and then starting to accumulate on hedges. And if you've seen the rather distressing images of hedgehogs being caught up in these, you'll understand that 
these things are a massive danger for hedgehogs. So if you are out and about, do remember to look out for these things and pick them up and take them home with you and discard them there at home. The hedgehog certainly will appreciate it. If you're looking for more information on how to attract and care for hedgehogs in your garden, I've got a whole playlist full of videos right here. Otherwise, if you just want some more hedgehog content, I've got a video waiting for you right here, and I'll see you in that video. Until next time, for myself, Mike, here in Hedgehog's Hollow, take care. Bye-bye.